So have you ever gotten into a project where once you get into it a little bit, you realize that the person that was there before you really had no business doing what they were doing? Well, that is the case that we have here. The wiring in the outlet box is way too short. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Adam here. And today I'm be showing you exactly how to fix this if you come across where you have too short of wires in one of your electrical boxes. But this is a scenario that is very, very common. One of the big problems with having the wires so short is if anybody wants to change them out in the future, it's gonna make things really, really difficult because there's almost no room to work with. And then on top of that, because the wiring is so short, there is going to be some tension on those wires and especially at those contact points which can also lead to some other serious issues. So let's go ahead, take a look at what we got, and I'll show you how to fix it. Let's go. Now the first thing that needs to be done before anybody does any electrical work is to make sure that the power is off going to whatever it is that you're working on. So make sure that the circuit breaker is in the off position. And then of course you wanna test it just to make sure that you got the right breaker and it is in fact off. All right, so before I show you how to go about fixing this, let's go ahead and take a look at code just to see what should have been here. So according to the NEC 300.14, which is titled Length of Free Conductors at Outlets, Junctions, and Switch Points, it states that at least 150 millimeters or six inches of free conductor measured from the point in the box where it emerges from its raceway or cable sheath shall be left at each outlet, junction, and switch point for splices or the connection of luminaries or devices. Where the opening to an outlet, junction, or switch point is less than 200 millimeters or eight inches in any dimension, each conductor shall be long enough to extend at least 75 millimeters or three inches outside of the opening. So what this is essentially saying is if you see where this wiring is entering into the box, you see where it still has the sheathing on it, right where it enters, well, what it's saying is, is from this point, there should be at least six inches coming from right there to outside of the box. And then by doing that from there, there should be at least three inches that extend beyond the front portion of the box. So not only do we not have six inches coming from the sheathing to outside of the front of the box, we don't have anywhere near even an inch extending beyond the front of the box here. So what some people might try to do in order to extend this is they might try to pull on the wiring to see if they can extend this wiring out further that maybe there's some slack in there. Well, the problem with that is that if this was done correctly, it's gonna be stapled up onto the studs themselves and it's not gonna allow for any slack to be pulled, let alone when the wiring is run, they don't typically leave any slack. So me personally, I wouldn't even advise trying to pull this down any further because you could actually do more damage. Now another option, and it would be the more correct way in order to fix this, would be to run an entire new wire from where it originates to this box, making sure that it has enough length. Now that could be fairly expensive and it could also be very labor intensive, but that is one option that can be done in order to make sure that things are done correctly. However, I'm gonna show you another way that's fairly quick and inexpensive to do. So this had an outlet on it, so I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and straighten out these wires. Now the more preferred method would be to just cut off these hooks, trim off some more insulation, and then just start with new copper. However, my wires are already too short and I don't want to make them any shorter. So as long as the copper looks okay, we're just gonna keep it like this. Next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my extra wiring and I'm just gonna cut off a section to make some pigtails. I'm gonna need a pigtail for each of my wires. So in this case, I have one black line wire, I have one bare copper ground wire, and I also have one white neutral wire. All right, so now I've got each of my pigtails made up, so now I need to figure out how am I gonna connect these to these wires. Well, for any of you that have already watched my channel, you know that a lot of the times I'm using wire nuts. There's a whole list of reasons why I like to use these wire nuts. However, just because of how short they are already, and then when I go to push them into the back of the box, I don't wanna have any risk of having any strain added to these that would be unnecessary because in order to use a wire nut properly, you do need to have an adequate amount of wire in order for that wire nut to be able to go over on top of the wires and then be able to bend it back into place and to where everything has plenty of room. And there are a bunch of options out there. One of them would be these push connects that I believe these ones are made by Ideal to where you just push the wiring into them 
once it goes up into this clear section here, you see that metal, it crimps down on it and just holds the wire in place. I believe these can be used in certain installations, but they remind me too much of just backstabbing an outlet because they're kind of working the same way. So in this case, what I'm going to use is this Wago. Now these Wagos certainly have their place in many different installations. In my opinion, not every installation, but I think that this is a good candidate for this particular situation. Now the way that these Wagos work is you have a couple of slots. Now they have different sizes, so you can buy three or five or whatever's needed. And you got these slots here where the wiring will go in. There's these levers on top that have to be up in order to insert the wiring. Once the wiring is pushed up into those slots there, and you can turn this over actually, and you can see on the bottom side, this piece of metal, this is what then sends the electricity from one wire to the next wire. And then once the wiring is inserted correctly, push the levers down and it locks the wire into place. Now I am going to make one exception for using the Wagos and actually using a wire nut on the ground wire itself and my ground wire pigtail. And for me personally, I just feel more comfortable making sure that I have plenty of contact between my wires, especially on my ground wire. So I'm just going to take my ground coming out of the box and my ground pigtail. And I'm going to put it up next to each other and then I'm just going to start off by doing a little bit of pre-twisting. So then after I got my ground wires pre-twisted enough, then I'm just going to take my wire nut, put it over the top of those wires, and then just tighten it down until I really can't go any further. Then once I've got that all connected, I will just curl it around and put it into the back of the box out of the way. So while I'm doing that, if you're finding this video to be helpful or interesting, please do me a big favor and hit that thumbs up button down below. It really does help the video out to spread to more people, so maybe it can help them as well. I really do appreciate it. Let's get back to it. All right, so next I'm going to work on this white neutral wire, and it's actually stripped a little bit too much. I got a little bit too much copper sticking out here. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim it down a little bit to where I've got about a half an inch total of copper sticking out. And then I'm going to take my white pigtail, I'm going to trim about a half an inch of insulation off of the end. Now if you look on your wire strippers, of course you'll see these numbers along the side. Most people know that that's for the gauge size of wire but what they might not know is why the numbers are different on each side. So for instance, if you look at your wire strippers, you'll see on this one, these over here, this says for solid. So for solid core wiring, which is what we're using. And then over here, it says stranded. And so that would be for stranded wiring. It's definitely important to make sure that you're using the correct number for the wiring that you are stripping. All right, so first I'm going to insert my pigtail into this Wagos. So I'm just going to flip up this lever here, which is going to open up the slot for the wire to slide into. It's going to push that wiring up inside of there. And then if we flip it here to the bottom side, you can really see through this clear plastic to see that the wiring is seated all the way up. And you can see this copper just below this metal piece that is what sends the electricity from wire to wire. So we know we're going to have a good connection. So now that I've confirmed that it's seated correctly, I'll just flip down that lever. And now that wire is not going to come out. So now I'm just going to flip up the other lever that the wire is not underneath, flip that up, and then I'm going to push it over my wire that's coming out of the wall. And again, I like to put it on upside down so I can see through that clear piece just to make sure everything is seated. And once I've confirmed that it is, I'll just push that lever down. And now my two wires are connected. So now this can go into the back of the box as well. All right, so now all that I've got left is my black line wire coming out. So I'm just going to do the same thing that I did with the white one. So I'm going to trim this down a little bit. Then I'm going to put the Wago on the black wire, just like I did with the white wire. And then take the wire coming out of the wall and put it in the remaining slot on the Wago. Once it's seated correctly, clamp it down. And now I can push that into the back of the box. All right, so now as you can see, I've extended my wires out to where they need to be, and now I can install my new outlet. All right, so the wire that always goes first is the ground wire. So I'm gonna wrap that bare copper wire around that green ground screw in a clockwise direction, and then tighten it down. Next, I'll take the white neutral wire and I'll connect it to one of the silver and colored terminals in a clockwise direction and tighten it down. Likewise, I'll take my black hot wire and attach it to one of the gold colored terminal screws and tighten it down. Also, when putting outlets into these old work boxes, snap off the ears all the way around the yoke. That way it's going to sit flush and your trim plate that goes over the top is just going to sit flush with the wall and look a whole lot better.
So as you guys saw, this was a really easy solution to a very common problem. If you like electrical type videos, I've done quite a few electrical projects in the past, especially dealing with wiring. If you'd like to check those out, I'll post them right over here. And I really hope that this video was helpful for you. If it was, please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And of course, if you have any questions or comments at all, you can leave those down in the comment section down below. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.